Never a dull moment in the NBA because after the buzzer sounded, there was a little bit of an incident here courtside at the Crypto.com arena. Randy again at the other end. Look out, look out. Uh-oh, that's going to be a technical foul. They're going to call a double team. And look at Desmond Bain. Oh, there's some bad blood, serious bad blood right now. Can't get that one to fall. Jaron, yes. Well, how do you not call a foul, man? How do you not call that foul? Two technical fouls. This, this has not been good at all. I mean, this, 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 is, this has been absolutely ridiculous. Back in 2022, after winning 56 games with a starting lineup that had an average age of 24, the Memphis Grizzlies were supposed to be up next. They were supposed to take over the Western Conference as their star point guard John Morant made the leap to an MVP level player. Instead, less than two years later, Memphis without Ja has collapsed into the worst team in the Western Conference with two wins and nine losses. And while the easy answer is to blame Ja Morant Morant's suspension for the Grizzlies start, Ja Morant is not the only problem. In 2022, the Grizzlies were 21 and 7 without Ja. The problem is not just Ja Morant's absence. Instead, as you were about to see, the Memphis Grizzlies as a team have made a rapid succession of moves that have been backfiring in their faces, and these moves will have long-term effects. So what's up guys, Mike here, and by simply doing nothing, by simply not making trades. The Grizzlies currently could have Walker Kessler, Grayson Allen, and Jonas Valanciunas on this roster, but instead, in 2022, after it was seen as a disappointment when the Grizzlies lost to the Warriors in the second round of the playoffs, Memphis would make three big decisions that would ultimately seriously hurt them. As in backwards order here, for admitted dramatic effect, number one, they drafted Walker Kessler, who this summer played on Team USA, and traded him to the Jazz for Jake LaRavia, who is currently currently averaging three points per game. Two, Memphis traded Grayson Allen for Sam Merrill. This season, Grayson Allen is good enough to start for the Phoenix Suns next to Devin Booker and Kevin Durant and is averaging over 12 points per game while Sam Merrill is averaging one point per game in Cleveland. And three, the one move Memphis has gotten credit for, bringing in Steven Adams, has ultimately proven to be a mistake through time. As while Adams has brought a toughness to this team, in 2022, Jonas Valanciunas averaged around 18 points and 11 rebounds per game on 54% shooting. Adam's numbers pale in comparison. In 2023, we had the same story. Jonas averaged around 14 points and 10 rebounds per game on almost 55% shooting in only 25 minutes per game, while also, most importantly, Jonas played in 79 games. Because while you can't control injuries, what you can control is the medical evaluations before trades. But before we continue, guys, I am very excited to thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's video, because if you did not know. It's been getting cold, but football season has been getting exciting. And I've partnered with DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL, to hook you guys up. Right now, new customers who bet $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That is, if you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use my promo code Corzemba, and if you've already signed up like me, you are going to get a no sweat bet, which means you are going to get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay does not hit. Max reward limits apply. And if sports betting is not available in your state yet, do not worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. So again, guys, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers, use my promo code Corzemba, bet $5, and you are going to get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Corzemba only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into the video. At the end of the day here, Valanciunas has had both better stats and has been available to play at the end of both the 2022 and 2023 seasons while Steven Adams has suffered through injuries. Adams played in only 7 of the Grizzlies' 12 playoff games in 2022 and also missed the entire playoffs in 2023. He is also missing the entire 2024 season with injuries, which, again, I will say, injuries are unfortunate, but Valanciunas remains healthy and effective. These three moves in 2022 had a clear 
clear net negative effect on the Grizzlies roster in 2024. But then, going even further here, in this offseason, in a trade that netted the Boston Celtics Kristaps Porzingis, the Grizzlies got Marcus Smart, a player who plays the same position as their franchise star, and is owed $21 million in 2026. How Ja and Marcus Smart are going to fit together on the court when Ja comes back remains to be seen. Regardless of that, it needs to be emphasized that the Grizzlies have been awful even though they went and signed a direct replacement for Ja, and he has played 11 games in their starting lineup. Meanwhile, the Boston Celtics have jumped out to a 9-2 record and are in first place in the Eastern Conference as Kristaps Porzingis is averaging around 20 points per game. I do think the Luke Kennard trade for the Grizzlies is a good one when he's healthy. However, going 1-5 for five in this manner after winning 56 games and earning the second seed in the Western Conference is extremely rough. On top of this, the Grizzlies allow Dylan Brooks to walk this offseason while also publicly selling him out as Memphis felt the need to publicly tell the world that they were not going to re-sign Dylan Brooks when Dylan Brooks was at his lowest. As fans, did we find it amusing that Brooks had just completed a villain arc and had been embarrassed by LeBron James and then had been told by his own team that he was not going to be re-signed? Yes, that was amusing for fans. But in reality, is it really the right move as a franchise to publicly denounce your own player? The Grizzlies could have done this in private. They could have simply done this by not re-signing him. Brooks has, of course, began this season as the ultimate role player for a 6-3 Houston Rockets team that has shocked their league with their hot start as Brooks himself is shooting 55% from the field. The Grizzlies also added another point guard this offseason in Derrick Rose, which they were given credit for bringing in a veteran to help Ja, simply because Derrick Rose is an older point guard who was an MVP when he was young. I'm a Bulls fan. Derrick Rose was my favorite player. Derrick Rose has never been credited with mentoring any young player in the NBA. There's this thought that you might be helpful to, to Ja specifically. Yeah. D is that something you you want to undertake? I, I'm not going to tell you everything that we talked about, but I'm not here to babysit. I'm not here to babysit, micromanage, or any that. I'm not here to be a plant. I would love to believe in a Derrick Rose renaissance. Instead, his on-court play shows his best days are behind us, and also, why Memphis thought this was the right move or that he would be an effective backup at this point is extremely unclear to me. So while John Morant should certainly take his part of the blame here, if he had not done what he had done, he would be playing right now, and the Grizzlies would be, of course, better. What can Ja really do as he's sitting out from his suspension? Work. And he has. In a recent article, we have heard the following from his coach. Quote, he's pushing every button to get himself as prepared, but also help this team as best as he can through his brilliant IQ, his care factor, his voice, his presence, the spirit he brings. It's been awesome to see him take on, I don't want to say a leadership role, but just his investment in the group has been awesome. Learned a lot from him. He's learned a lot from me as well. So the Memphis Grizzlies coach Taylor Finch is saying that he's learned a lot from John Moran as Ja has gone through his suspension here. But at the end of the day, we need to ask ourselves, has Memphis put Ja in the best situation possible to return? And my answer on the court is no. They have made a string of obvious mistakes while we've also watched on-court fight after on-court fight combined with the public sellout of Dylan Brooks, which to me just does not sit well. That's your player. You don't have to sell him out. I get all of NBA Twitter might have been clowning on him. Personally though, I am really hoping though Ja comes back and regains that climb to MVP form we once saw. So I'm hoping this roster is able to figure it out. At the end of the day, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Desmond Bain are immense talents. I want to know what you think down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think, and again, have an awesome day.